Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. This episode is a continuation of a roundtable discussion of the risk management framework regarding step one, categorization, specifically focused on industrial control systems. Since this step is the most important in the process, we are presenting this review in a multi-part series. This particular podcast will discuss the process of accurately identifying information types. So, so Stephen, on the previous slide, we talked about uh, establishing a security program. Yeah, yeah. But in all actuality, a, mm-hmm. a security program is only going to be effect, effective mm-hmm. if the information types are actually identified. It's would you agree? True. Yeah, I, I, I 100% would agree. I mean, if you're looking at your security program, you really want to understand the type of personnel you need. Um, what type of training requirements they may have, what type of processes they're going to implement, and what technology they're going to use, what tools they're going to use in order to get this accomplished, uh, without understanding the security requirements that bound that, uh, you're dead in the water. Um, and and the, the defined way to understand what those security requirements are is to identify at first your information types. Um, NIST 860 Volume 2 lists, as we all know, list out all your information types. And if you, as a system owner, understand your operating environment, truly understand your operating environment, uh, then you can use that to look at your mission, look at how your system is used, what's important to your system's operation. And with that information, uh, you can then begin selecting which pieces of information actually exist in your system and, and what their impact is if said information is compromised. And, and the, the, the information types, mm-hmm. they're, um, they're looked at or prescribed mm-hmm. according to um, the impact that yeah. they have um, in, in the event that you lost mm-hmm. the confidentiality, integrity, mm-hmm. or the availability of that information type. Sure. And, and, and they're, they're given the category low, moderate, or, or high. Mm. Um, have you seen these situations where systems were without considering the information types just given the categorization. Yeah, I, actually I have. Um, in various environments, specifically control system environments, uh, where there isn't a culture of information system IT, where understanding uh, DOD instructions and policies isn't well adopted, uh, when the mandate has now fallen on those system owners and those environments to respond to RMF, and to respond to FISMA, they're looking for the path of least resistance. And that path has come with prescribed categorization. And the issue with that is that a system that is already prescribed as being low, 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 or low, low, moderate, can and probably will implement uh, undue requirements and procure undue cost. You know, you will then have personnel requirements that just doesn't fit the operating environment or doesn't really fit your operational needs. The other side of that same coin is that you may miss information types that now will not be protected and your mission, you know, you can kind of put cybersecurity in the concept aside for just a second and think about what do you need to operate. Those information types support that operational need and not taking the opportunity to identify those will compromise your mission. So, so um, there, there are a number of examples that are out there where uh, a system was uh, categorized um, based on some predefined notion of what it, th- it should be. Yeah. Um, but that could definitely really have an impact, um, as you discussed a second ago, mm. It could have an impact on the mission of, oh. of that control system. Absolutely. I mean, you know, sometimes you might look at a lighting system, for instance, right? Or a building automation system that uh, controls lighting and air and heating and things of that nature, but not consider its operational use as being uh, monitoring or uh, managing a, a building that has key personnel for a site. You know, this particular building houses the majority of the key personnel for a particular base or an installation. And the lights going out will impact the mission. Uh, The building being too hot and and where individuals then have to work remotely 
don't have access to various VTCs and things of that nature could impact your mission. Um, and these types of things can only be considered uh, or should be considered during step one, but they can only be considered if, if the system owner takes a very accurate and honest look at what is needed in order to operate. Uh, that is also equivalent to saying taking an honest look at what your security program will need. This will yield an accurate depiction of what information types you need and also uh, bring into light what impact levels those information types should have and then thus what security requirements need to be put, put in place. And, 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 and I believe that the, the information types will help the system owner um, if, this, if they're ac accurately selected, it's mm -hmm. going to help the system owner be able to uh, respond to risk. And yeah. although, although the high watermarks that are provided mm -hmm. based on the information type you have, mm -hmm. th those are just baseline. Yeah, those are the minimum set of requirements. If you read any instruction, these are the minimum, not the most you could do. If there's if you understand your mission needs additional redundancy that isn't identified with the information types you prescribe, it is on you, the system owner, it is your responsibility. You are accountable for ensuring that that redundancy is put in place. Um, and that might require elevating the impact level of a particular information type, which then results in a higher categorization or a higher watermark. So, so would, you, would, you, would you say that there's a there's a gap in understanding or applying uh, the security objectives mm. based on the, the minimum requirements and what's actually needed. Absolutely. Um, that gap is twofold. Uh, there's a gap in, in trying to adhere to a prescribed set of impact levels and associated requirements to your environment that in control systems, nine times out of 10, that environment is very unique. And so it, the puzzle doesn't quite fit, right? Uh, you know, the, the round peg doesn't quite uh, fit in the triangle hole, let's say that instead, right? Um, but on the other side of that, uh, there's also, you know, a prescribed information type doesn't necessarily have the impact level needed for the operation of that control system. Um, where you have a control system that is of a SCADA variant and it uh, processes some type of munitions or processes some type of uh, flammable or combustive uh, material. And operational risks are already known to the system owner and other members of the RMF group or community, um, and they're already in place. Uh, however, during categorization, that look wasn't accurately done, and so it's categorized lower than it should be. You're operating higher than your categorization, but it isn't documented. And that's the other flip side, you know, that, that fear that if I say, you know, my, the integrity of this data that's coming in that provides the sensor value coming from this controller that has to be, you know, 99.9999% uh, accurate yields that my categorization for integrity should be high. But the fear that if I say that, I'm going to have so many security requirements that I have to implement that I shy away from it. When in reality, your operating environment already has a majority of those controls. Right. They just look a little different because you're not standard IT, right? Um, I think this is important that a security uh, or a system owner understands that in order to get to the light at the end of their tunnel, which is a security program, okay. in order to establish an operating environment that is sustainable, uh, the accurately identified technology to support it, and the right training for your personnel, that an honest assessment of the information types that you have in your environment and that you need to meet not just through cybersecurity, but your mission has to take place. Very, very insightful. Um, I think the system owners um, hopefully will, will, will take the importance of the information types and accurately identify the impact levels to your environment so that the system owner can have the controls mm. and the mechanism mm. 
to respond to those threats to his environment that may have an impact on his mission. Yes, totally agree. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content informative and useful. If you would like to provide feedback or comments, please visit our website at www.csiac.org, where you can also find additional content to review. Thank you. Did you know that CSIAC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? Come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up. Visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars.